Good morning, everybody. A very warm welcome to, to all of you. Despite you know, the searing temperatures, I'm really happy to, to, to see all of you here. <coughs> Dr. Saida Hamid, Member Planning Commission. Mr. Tomislav Delinik, Officiating Resident Representative to India, Kass. Kass is Konrad Adenar Stiftung, uh, a German foundation in India. Distinguished guests, media, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning, a very warm welcome to the second ICRIER Kass seminar for this year on the 12th five-year plan and the challenges and opportunities for India's social sector. As some of you might know who've attended the first ICRIER Kass seminar this year, uh, that was on growth uh, about a couple of months ago. This is our fifth in our series of ICRIER Kass seminars. Uh, and we've enjoyed a very good relationship with Kass, and I thank Kass uh, at the outset for cooperating with us on this very kind of timely and uh, very interesting seminar series that we hold with them every year. All of you are very familiar with uh, ICRIER, so you know, uh, I don't want to spend too much time talking about ICRIER, but those of who are not, uh, let me just briefly mention that ICRIER was set up in 1981 uh, as a policy-oriented think tank to facilitate India's increasing integration into the global economy. So we've been around for about 30 years, and since then, ICRIER has come a long way and traversed an interesting and I guess a remarkable path towards achieving its vision. ICRIER's vision is to contribute to rapid and inclusive growth, and which is why we are kind of hosting a seminar on this topic here today by enhancing the knowledge content of policy making. We undertake policy-oriented research, and our stakeholders include the government, multilateral agencies, all stakeholders, consumers, as well as industry uh, associations and other institutions. And you know, since 1991, since after India liberalized, there's been a significant change in the focus of ICRIER's activities. We are no longer just focused on integration into the global economy, but as India struggles to keep pace with other countries in terms of its human development outcomes, naturally, ICRIER's activities have also changed to mirror some of those problems that we face in India's economy. And one of the uh, thrust areas that we have focuses on, on inclusion. The 11th five-year plan aimed at faster and inclusive growth, and we saw a number of key initiatives being launched by the union government in the social sector that have yielded positive results uh, over the plan period. However, weaknesses have, have remained, and uh, sub significant uh, things need to be done uh, to change the outcomes that we see in the social sector. There remain huge inequalities in access to most basic services, both within and across states, and this is clearly unacceptable and unsustainable for a country that aspires to a higher development status and a concomitant role in the Committee of Nations. I don't need to present here the dismal numbers that we see in terms of education and health outcomes and other human development indicators. And I guess to a persuaded audience like this, uh, all of you are probably familiar with uh, those numbers. But some of these will be discussed in the technical sessions, uh, sorry, technical session that will follow. Uh, but the issue for today's discussion, does the 12th five-year plan adequately address the challenges in the country's social sector, and does it offer sufficient opportunities for its development? This is, I guess, a weighty issue, a very important issue, a crucial issue for India, and we have a number of distinguished speakers who will uh, deliberate on this and enlighten us with their worthy insights. On behalf of ICRIER and CAS, our partner for the seminar series, as I said, I welcome Dr. Saida Hamid, who will deliver the keynote address shortly. Dr. Hamid has been a distinguished member of the Planning Commission, as well as of the Island Development Authority, which is headed by the Honorable Prime Minister, since 2004. She looks after health, 
women and children, minorities, voluntary action in the states of Rajasthan and Andaman and Nicobar Islands at the Planning Commission. Dr. Hamid also heads several important organizations, among them being the Maulana Azad National Urdu University in Hyderabad, of which she is the Chancellor. Dr. Hamid was awarded the Padma Shri in 2007, the Al Amin All India Community Leadership Award in 2006, and the BMR Award in 2012. Thank you, Dr. Hamid, uh, for being here with us today. I also welcome Dr. Santosh Mehrotra, who is Director General of Institute of Applied Manpower Research, which is the only autonomous research institute of the Planning Commission. He was the head of the Development Policy Division at the Planning Commission until 2009, head of the Rural Development Division again at the Planning Commission from 2006 to 2008, and the lead author of the 11th Five-Year Plan. He has also led the team that wrote the India Human Development Report, which was published by the Oxford University Press in 2010. Dr. Mehrotra has written extensively on the issues related to health, education, human development in general, and we are eager to hear him speak on these topics. Dr. Sonal Desai, who is Professor of Sociology at the University of Maryland, USA, and a senior fellow at NCAR, is the lead presenter today and was the lead author of the 2010 India Human Development Report. She is a demographer by training whose work primarily deals with social inequalities in developing countries with a particular focus on gender and class inequalities. She has also studied inequalities in education, employment, maternal and child health outcomes within the context of the political economy of the region. I would also like to thank the three distinguished discussants on the panel today who have been long leaders in the field of human development, Dr. Nisha Garwal, CEO of Oxfam India, Dr. Amirullah Khan, the president of Glocal University, and Ms. Caitlin Wiesen, country director of UNDP India. All the bios, uh, the brief profiles of speakers will be in, in the packet before you. And I'm really grateful that we've been able to assemble such a, a distinguished panel of speakers. I am sure that you will enjoy listening to these eminent speakers and hope you will participate in the discussions that will follow, both in the opening session as well as in the technical session. We've allocated some time for interaction with the speakers, which you know, uh, we feel adds a lot of uh, value to the discussions. I also once again take this opportunity to thank CAS, Mr. Tomislav Delenik, Mr. Pankaj Madan, and the rest of the CAS team for their continued cooperation. I would also like to thank Ali Mehdi from ICRE and the rest of the events team who has painstakingly coordinated the seminar disregarding the heat that this event has brought about. Thank you very much for being here. And I would also like to say uh, that at the end of this CAS seminar series, uh, which we will have four such seminars, uh, the other two are going to be held outside of Delhi, not to get away from the heat, but just to take this to uh, other geographical locations in India. Uh, one will be in Kolkata and the other will be in Mumbai. And the, at the end of the series, we're hoping that we're able to put all of the four seminar series together in the form of proceedings or a book. But we are working on that. And if that uh, happens, I'm sure that all of you would like to have a look at it. And thank you, uh, all of you, for participating in this seminar and braving the heat of Delhi to be here. Thank you very much. And may I now invite Mr. Tomislav Delinik to make his opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Rajat Katuria. Um, Dr. Saida Hamid, um, member of the Planning Commission. Um, dear panelists, experts, sharing your thoughts today with us. Uh, dear guests, uh, friends of ICRIA and the Konrad Adenauer Foundation. Very good morning also from my side. Konrad Adenauer Foundation is, is a German uh, uh, organization now 50 years active on the international level. In more than 100 countries, we try to support and develop platforms of uh, discussion, on matters of uh, democ democracy, um, matters of rule of law, uh, development of social questions, and so on. And um, here in India, we are, we are trying to do so uh, for more than 40 years, and we are very happy and very proud of our partnership with many distinguished um, organizations, such as ICRIA here in India. And uh, Dr. Katuria, in recent years, I think we have developed a, a quite a good set of, um, of formats where we discuss um, um, 
important questions of development for both sides, but also for uh, India itself as well. And as all of you uh, know, and that is also reason why you are here, there are many questions which we all are looking for answers. So therefore, um, looking at the, at the uh, quarterly, um, um, quarterly format of seminars we have developed here, our recent one and uh, the one today, we try to pick up uh, these topics and bring the distinguished guests and experts from all over the country, but especially here also in Delhi together, to find answers. And especially I'm very thankful that members of the Planning Commission would share their thoughts and input from their point of view with the experts here and engage in a heated discussion as well. Besides all these uh, uh, events, we have also studies going on, so questions of fiscal prudence, of investment possibilities, and so on, are uh, uh, of, of uh, I hope, uh, utmost importance also to you and, and bring value um, to, the, to the development of the arguments here in India. So in this regard, let me thank you, Dr. Katuria, and your, your team for all these initiatives you have developed and, and the professionalism you have uh, taken up to, to uh, bring these, these seminars and events forward. Today's seminar, you have already heard a couple of thoughts, and let's not prolong it too much, but uh, we're looking at the social sector vis-a-vis -vis the 12th five-year plan, and I think we have an excellent uh, uh, panel of speakers. Um, there's always criticism on, on uh, development of existing state of affairs, but that is good, and I think we're for, for um, that we'll lay down also the foundation or the path of future progress. Um, but I think it's also very important to point out that, that progress has been undertaken and, and found, and, uh, and in this regard, um, I mean, it's nothing new to you that, that uh, India is very much globally perceived as a power horse uh, in economic terms, and also, and this is something from the European point of view of uh, importance, uh, um, a power horse with, a, with a, a demographic dividend, which is a huge chance for the country. Um, but then again, all of you know, especially if you look at, at the question of social terms, um, that lots of homework has still to be uh, done to actually turn this, this huge amount of young people in this country into uh, this energetic factor everybody hopes it will turn into. The other way around in Europe, in Germany, we have to also think about concepts, how to actually overcome the demographic challenge we have. And the other point of uh, um, view, that we have not enough young people to um, to take up the, the workforce in our society. So in, in this regard, I think we have many thoughts to share on both sides and see what, what uh, policies will lead to a, to a successful end to actually use demographic chances or demographic realities in the best way to develop our societies and economies to welfare and a, a peaceful state. Um, in this regard, um, I think that, that Germany has also uh, learned its lesson after the development of the Second World War, where, where from, from uh, um, our zero, uh, new concepts have been brought in. The question of the social market economy, which uh, all parties in the, in the country share as a strong belief to develop the, the, the economic uh, um, possibilities, um, is something where we, we try also to, to uh, develop um, our ideas and our system um, based on new and recent developments, as I mentioned, for example, through the fact that now we have a very aging society which is not uh, capable anymore to ke keep up the pace with holding up the social standards which we had so far. So we have to rethink and find new, new inputs, and in this regard we are also looking, looking at development in the world, and India is for sure one of the most important partners we have, and I'm very, very uh, interested in the discussion and the points of view which will be brought up today, especially, Dr. Hamid, thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts right up from the beginning here, and I'm very sure that all of you are now eagerly waiting for these arguments and uh, points of discussion you uh, will make. In this regard, let me thank you in the name of the Konrad Adenauer Foundation to ICRIA, Dr. Katuria. You mentioned also your dear uh, colleague and uh, your, your team, uh, Mr. Ali Mehdi, also for, you, for your work. I'm very thankful uh, that you bring uh, this initiative eventually to the ground. It is uh, many, many processes which all of us don't see. And I'm uh, thankful to, to you, Dr. Katuri, and your team that you're fighting this fight and we can in eventually enjoy an interesting 
event. To all the speakers, to everybody in the auditorium, thank you very much for being with us. And I hope that you will also, despite the fact that we will be outside of Delhi, follow the discussion of the next seminars. But there's many events also, not only of ECRIA, but also of ECRIA and KS. I would be happy if you join us again as, as well. But for now, let us uh, wish a good, successful seminar. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Kathuria, uh, Tomislav Delenik, uh, my colleagues and friends, Santosh, Mehrotra, Nisha, Caitlin, Sonal, and Amirullah Khan, and so many other uh, distinguished colleagues that are here today. In, I'm mean, particularly very happy to see Santosh here, my distinguished colleague for many years at the Planning Commission, now heading up a very important institute. Um, I, I'm glad that you are having this seminar here, and I'm glad you're taking it to other centers. But I sometimes wish that it could go to the smaller centers in the country. Uh, and also, if some of this could be in the Hindi medium. Because I think that whole idea of inclusive growth, which does not take into its fold, you know, the mass of people who would be completely and totally out of the orbit of a seminar like this, I think we really need to rethink that. And this is a, a very good forum because I think that uh, what we can get out of a forum like this, there are many uh, seminars and many discussions, but what we can get out of a forum like this is how to actually um, take the distinguished minds and the intellectuals who are sitting around this room, take them on board and move with this very elusive concept of inclusive growth. Uh, today we are all uh, in reeling under the shock of the Bastar killings. We are, none of us have, are not affected by the fact that uh, two important leaders, Mahinder Karma and Patel, were killed. The Patel's son Dinesh was killed by the Maoists, and none of us can be unmoved by the fact that these were 18 and 20 year olds who ambushed them in while the cavalcade was moving towards a big event, a big political event. We have all been following uh, with great interest. I remember when a team of, um, uh, a very distinguished team led by Ramchandra Goha had gone several years ago to study the situation in the depths of this Bastar area in Chhattisgarh forest and come out with a chilling report. So inclusiveness, what, what is it? While, while we all condemn the violence in which innocents have been killed and those youth who encountered them, they were also 18 and 20 year olds who in a chilling manner bludgeoned Mahinda Karma to death. What is, what is this anger that you see? And I think in a distinguished gathering like this, we have to come to grips and come to term with it. Completely jumping to another subject, what is this chilling anger? What is this violence that we encounter as far as violence against women, which reached a peak on December the 16th, 2012? in the case of the gang rape of Nirbhaya. What is it with those youth who commit this kind of violence? Is it something which is always, we, it, we simply sometimes say this has always happened, now there's more reporting, now there's more sensitivities, now there is more um, media attention focused on this. But something about what my colleague Tomislav talked about this demographic dividend. What is happening with this demographic dividend? How are we going to, how are we going to address the concern of a more inclusive growth? You, Santosh was one of the authors of the 11th five-year plan. It was towards a faster and inclusive growth. 
This plan is towards a more inclusive, faster and sustainable growth. So we were not able to achieve the inclusive growth. That is why this plan is about more inclusive and sustainable. Today, the newspapers are reporting every single leader has condemned the killing. But there is also a voice that are we going to stop the development in these areas? No, we cannot stop our efforts to bring development in the remotest and the most complex areas. Two days ago, I've just come from Mexico, visiting an area called the Chiapas, where again, these, the Aztecs and the Mayans, the tribals who have been totally and completely displaced by the powers that sit in Mexico City and neighboring country. So what are they doing? What are they being reduced to? There is something which lesson that one needs to take and there is something that one needs to apply one's mind to the fact that it is not the fact that we have got, we have got monitorable targets in the plan. Santosh was res responsible in, in preparing the monitorable targets of the 11th plan. He's, and some of you have also been part of civil society consultation in which we have prepared these monitorable targets. I will simply tell you some of the monitorable targets, which you all know very well. And you have experts like Sonal, and you have uh, somebody like Amirullah Khan, uh, Caitlin, who's also been involved with us, who will talk more about it in the technical session. But here, for example, in the, in the sec sec sectors that I deal with, in health and education. In education, one of the overall monitorable targets is mean years of schooling to increase to seven years. Enhance access to higher education by two million seats additional for each cohort. Eliminate gender and social gap for SCs, STs, Muslims, and the rest of the marginalized. In health, reduce IMR to, to 25 and MMR to 1 per 1,000. TFR to 2.1. Under nutrition among children, 0 to 3 by half.